never fear. Cinders is here. Today I bring to you my video discussion for Series 9, Episode 3 of Doctor Who, Under the Water. Now I've got three things more or less related to the episode, at least connect to the episode, uh, that I want to talk about. I mean, like I said, my, these discussions I'm doing are not just reviews of the episode, but they take something out of the episode and either relate it to the, the bigger universe of Doctor Who or to us as humanity. Or it could just be sometimes what's going on in the episode. Uh, my last one will be kind of like that. But first off, I want to talk about the sunglasses. I don't get everyone's big deal with the sunglasses. I mean, at least he's not going, he's not going around telling you his sonic sunglasses are cool. And you know, I've posted one place a, a joke because you know, Captain Jack Harkness, he gives the doctor a hard time about his sonic screwdriver. Jack says, what makes you look at a screwdriver and say this needs to be more sonic? I mean, that's funny. And you can say the same about the glasses. What makes you look at a pair of sunglasses and say these could be more sonic? But that's what the, that's what the 12th Doctor has done. He said these things could be sonic. But you know what? Have you really paid attention to what we are doing with wearable technology? He's just going right along with the current trends. Yeah, most of it is uh, things to go on our wrists, watches, wristbands, is things to keep track of your health and, and so on and so forth. But uh, not everything is. Uh, how about that uh, shirt that plays music? <laughs> um, Google has put out this uh, almost like a glasses thing that uh, lets you get online or something like that. It looks a lot worse than regular sunglasses that are supposed to be sonic. And of course, you've got regular sunglasses that are built to be camcorders and cameras. You push your button, you take a picture, 14 megapixel picture, or you can record, and it's got a mini SD in it, and it can record video, and it's a pair of sunglasses. Tell me how that, in particular, is much different than what the doctor's done. Now, I will say, those sunglasses are a lot more likely to, to, to fall to break than the Sonic. That's very true. The Sonic is, is maybe sturdier, more durable than the sunglasses. We know they're not going to stay forever, for one thing. The screwdriver will be back. It always comes back. We've had the, the Sonic cane. We've had a couple other variations of Sonic devices that the doctor has used besides his traditional sonic screwdriver. This isn't much different. And it is taking a, a shot, in some regards, at our current level of devices. Um, you know, the, Google's, Google, the Google Glass thing, it's not gone so well because it costs $1,500 to get it. And I think they've already stopped making them for some, because they were so expensive. We've got a lot of great great wearable technology and some not so great wearable technology and we're eventually going to get to where you know our sonic technology is increasing who knows what we're going to do with it uh, do you really think this is the way we're going to go as humans or are we going to be more like Jack with the sonic ray gun um, his sonic Sonic glasses, especially in this one, he uses it to uh, send video somewhere else. People can see what he sees through his glasses. 
we have those type of glasses. They're not sonic operated. They're they're wireless or whatever. But it's it's, it's the same idea. The sonic just goes above and beyond what we with our wireless technology can do right now. But we're not that far different in things we actually have to these sunglasses. So why is there such a big deal being made about these sonic sunglasses? Or sonic shades as I called them the first time I, I, I made comment on them. But he does, he does seem, to, seem, seem to like them. And for the 12th Doctor, they kind of fit his personality. Now they would have never worked with 11. They might, they might have worked with 9 with 10 they work with 12 they wouldn't have worked too well with 11 uh, a few other doctors it might have worked with but not all of them they wouldn't I mean they definitely wouldn't have worked with one uh, I don't see him working with three but there's a few other doctors that they could have worked with give it a rest people it won't be here forever. Who knows how they're going to go away. They may get smashed. Whatever. It's eventually going to go back to a screwdriver. In the meantime, let's see how, how Moffat's going to use this, use the shades. What ways they, they can be beneficial. So he actually gets a chance to do something with them. That you wouldn't do with a screwdriver. It gives you a chance for some variety. Something different than what we usually see the screwdriver do. So give it a shot. Okay. So next is the translator for the, the deaf woman who's actually in charge. He's the translator. He's the one who has not actually been inside the alien craft. So he has not seen the, the, those symbols on the on the uh, side so he's not been affected by him his, his brain has not been scrambled or whatever to start making him be willing to produce that so there was no point in killing him at least as far as as far as I see and understand that's the case there was no reason to kill him because he wasn't going to start doing what they were doing he hasn't seen the symbols they haven't mess with his mind to make him start spouting him out as a, as a dead person. That said, you know, the doctor at the end of the episode is going, I'm missing something. There's there's something more here I, I should already be able to know. But she's done several times before. And this doctor is very scatterbrained. He doesn't remember everything. I mean, look at his very first episode. He doesn't remember the Mary Celeste. He doesn't or not the rest of the last, but uh, Madame Pompadour. <laughs> Those creatures, they're the same, they're the same, they're not the same, specifically the same ones, but they're the same, but they're of the same group of people, of, of robotic, half robotic, half human uh, creation, creatures. They're a sister ship to that one that the Tenth Doctor dealt with. And he can't remember, can't remember who they are. He's, he, got this itching idea that it's there that he should know them but he can't think of it and that's not the first time it's not the only time um, but this doctor he, he does he struggles sometimes to remember things he knows and uh, this is one of those things maybe he's got it in his head but something's different about this guy because he does ask the question, well, why didn't, why didn't he attack you? But I don't know if it's sunk in to the doctor's brain exactly why. Probably because they, I don't know if they've told him he hasn't actually seen and he hasn't been affected like everybody else. And I think if the doctor knew that, what's about to happen in the next episode would definitely probably take, take, take place differently. The doctor would use this guy somehow try and get more information uh, because he is unique and not having seen it. I think he would try and make sure he doesn't see and, and use that to his advantage somehow. 
but he hasn't noticed it. And I think that, that, that that's one of those things. I don't think it's a, it's a mistake. I hope in some way it'll be addressed next episode. But that was something I noticed that, I'll, that apparently the doctor hasn't put together yet. And then the last one, and I don't know if you've picked up on this yet. It was hard to tell that tell this fact in the first two episodes. You didn't really get to take and pay pay any real attention to some of the new details of Clara's character. But they kind of stood out in this episode a little bit more. They arrive, and Clara is. Itching for adventure. She's, ex I mean, she's looking for it. She wants it. She's starting to thrive on it. I mean, we started to see hints of it. I mean, here she's so excited. She's trying to high five the doctor, and she's upset when when he doesn't respond and like. She gets upset with that because she is. And, and last season we kind of saw this transformation of Clara. To be more like the doctor, but then at the end you get this break, this this psychological break, um, with the death of uh, Danny, and and all that, where you thought, well, maybe she was gonna snap out of her leanings to be more and more like the doctor, but obviously we see in this episode. She's not. And the doctor kind of has caught on to it. He's noticing her excitement being mirroring more and more like his. Uh, her enthusiasm, her, will, her desire, her drive to find adventure. In some ways, it may even be surpassing his. Um, I didn't put the video scene, this video scene, when they go back to the TARDIS in the middle of the episode, he's almost tempted to lock her in there. Because he thinks she's getting out of control, but of course, we saw his 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 part of the episode where he's getting out of control because he thinks he's finally found something he was confident didn't exist. Natural occurring ghosts. Now, obviously, we're finding out they're not naturally occurring ghosts, but he for a minute there he was really excited. He thought he'd see, he he was experiencing something new. Now, we've seen these episodes with almost ghost-like creatures several times, especially since the reboot. Uh, the Ninth Doctor faces, uh, I can't remember the name of the people, but they're in this gaseous state, they're spirit-like, they've lost their bodies. I know their name starts with a G, but I can't think of what it is. Uh, and... They're trying to inhabit the dead bodies in the morgue, which this morgue is sitting around the, the, the rift in Cardiff. And this is the episode where we see the one actress who later goes on to play in Torchwood um, as a descendant of this person. And we get a ghost, we get ghost lights, ghost like creatures in that episode with Charles Dickens, and we get with the Tenth Doctor where we end up with one of the most heart-wrenching scenes following on the heels of, the, of this adventure with the uh, Cybermen from a different universe that have found a way to start trying to bridge into our universe and everyone sees them as ghosts every time the Torchwood Institute is using this machine and doing things but the Cybermen appear like ghosts. So the people think they're ghosts, and the, the doctor's able to prove to them they're not. So, I mean, it's not the first time we've, we've, we've seen ghosts. Of course, the Eleventh Doctor goes uh, with, with the psychic, and, and uh, this guy is studying what he, think, he thinks is a ghost. So he's got all his equipment for that. And he, and this one's with Clara as companion, and um, it deals with this bubble universe where where she's visible 
on occasion in our universe. And it seems like she's a ghost from the past, but she's really living in, in a much slower time frame, so her history seems to be unchanging when in her reality it is. And of course, again, the doctor was confident it wasn't a ghost, but this time he was. And they are, in a sense, ghosts. They're definitely the closest thing we've had to real ghosts in the series. But I'm off topic now, aren't I? Um, but Clara, Clara has changed. She is a thrill, I mean, she was always something of a thrill seeker, in a, in a sense. But she's different. And I want I, I don't know how this is going to play out for the rest of the series. How it's going to play out in her leaving. And I think something about her nature is going to be why she leaves. It's, I mean, it's really almost what causes the split at the end of Series 8. When she is ready to leave the Doctor until we get the Christmas special. It's more like in the old Clara of old than the first two episodes. I guess because there were so many big characters with Missy with Clara, with the Doctor, with Davros. I mean, you've got the Dalek Supreme. Um, you've got so many of these important characters. You've got the Sisterhood of Karn. Uh, I mean, you've got a lot of people involved in, in those two episodes. It was easy to not see any of the nuanced stuff. I mean, you see, like I said, she looked more like the old Clara. I mean, she takes advantage of, of finding the mistress's stick, but then she wasn't willing to do anything with it. That was the old, that looked like the old Clara. And now she's more interested in saving the day than she was before. Showing in her character, I mean, she sounded like a very different person, especially in this clip here. Um, I mean, she sounded very different. And it's something we've seen to a degree with some of the more, with some of the previous doctors, is the the people he's traveled with turn out to be warriorish. I mean, it, Davros and the Daleks point that out to the Doctor uh, during the end of Tenants, the tenth Doctor's reign. You know, you've turned all these people into warriors. Martha, uh, Mickey. Mickey becomes a warrior, and Mickey was, he was afraid of confrontation, he, he, he was a wuss in a big sense, when we first meet Mickey, but through his adventure, especially going to that parallel universe, uh, meeting up with his other version of himself, and the resistance there, turns into a soldier, um, how scary was it to watch Rose during, uh, during that time, when she pops up with this huge old gun herself, I mean, that was not Rose before either. But she's complaining, Doctor, what are you turning into in the episode Dalek? And yet, somehow, he always seems to rub his companions in that direction. But I think Clarus has been the most like the Doctor. And I, I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. But I mean, it almost kind of rubbed me as being off. As being a bad thing in her case. Um, I mean, she's the school teacher. I mean, and that, as much as she was trying to step up and almost take the man on the Doctor in, in some regards, during season eight, she was the school teacher who wanted to have a real life, but she seems to have abandoned the, the, the real life since Danny has gone. She's embracing and over embracing, in my opinion, her life with the doctor in a very different way from every other companion he's had. Um, that's basically. I want to talk about. I'd love to hear your thoughts. 
go ahead and complain complain about what I had to say about the Sonic glasses if you must. But I'd love to. I, I mean, I do want to hear your thoughts on the Sonic glasses. I want to hear your thoughts on the development of Clara, the changes you've seen, and as I, I've mentioned like in Clara's development. Uh, and if you had picked up on the thing with the other character, let me know what your thoughts are on that as well. This is Super Saiyan 7 Cindersh. This has been another uh, Doctor Who episode discussion. Hope you do like the video. If you have not done so, please subscribe to my channel. I, I am trying to grow it. I'm, I'm still new. I've got lots of room to grow, and I need you guys to, to subscribe for that to happen. And we will see you again here in the near future with another video.